I want things to be great for people of color and for women. For us to be able to show up at work, do our best work, and be appreciated for that work. So if I can contribute to that, and it's not gonna be easy. You know, there's gonna be lots of challenges. You know, I'm sure there'll be frustrating days. I'm sure there'll be times I cry. I don't mind crying, by the way. Uh, but I'm hopeful. You know, and I think that's really what's driving me is that I'm hopeful. I can see the larger picture. That was marketing executive Bozma St. John in 2017. And she says, quote, there is nothing more badass than being yourself. Bozma is now the chief marketing officer at Netflix. And she oversees more than $2 billion to promote shows and films in more than 30 countries. She previously worked as an executive at companies you might have heard of, Uber, Apple, and Pepsi, to name a few. Bozma St. John joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Drew. How are you? I have to tell you, I have been wanting to speak with you. You were one of the first people I talked about, actually, when we launched our show, The Drew Barrymore Show. I did a little feature on you. I've been a total fan of yours. And, you know, you've been given this $2 billion budget, but I was studying and saw that you worked at Spike DDB, which is uh, a nod to Doyle Dane Burnback, the famous advertising agency, and that you guys talked about the importance of marketing and messaging. Why is that so important? Well, messaging is all about storytelling. You know, I learned that lesson very early on. I was probably 12 <laughs> when my family moved from Ghana, where originally from, to Colorado Springs, Colorado. And really, the only thing that connected me to my classmates, uh, because so many things separated us, you know, race, uh, culture, language, food, so many things. The only thing that really connected us was pop culture. Mm -hmm. You know, the storytelling, the connections of music and fashion and sport, yes. you know, the things that were happening daily and constantly. So for me, that's that's really where it all started. And, and that's why I love marketing, because it's all about storytelling and making the connections between people who may not otherwise see their connections. What I love about that is that Parley is one of the reasons I've been such a fan of yours is because I, too, love pop culture. It absolutely connects us. And when you go in to all of these incredible companies that have such power, so much money behind them, so much ability to get these storytelling out in commercials and ad buys, like, I want to know, as the queen of cool, like, where do you get your news? What sites do you think we should all be watching? Where should we be turning to be on top of and ahead of the curve on pop culture? <laughs> well, the first trick, Drew, is to be endlessly curious. You know, just to be curious about people, about their stories, about uh, where they are from, what their backgrounds are. And when you're curious about people, you'll be, you'll be surprised by how much you'll learn just in the simple questions. I can pick up things from anywhere. You know, from the grocery store to Twitter to ear hustling in the airport. Well, back when we could all travel mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to just about any any place. I mean, it's it's really just about being curious about where what people are and what they're doing and why they're doing things. You know, I'm I'm probably one of those people that if you ever meet at a, at a cocktail party or or someplace where we've never met, I'm probably going to be asking you a lot of questions about why it is that you are the way that you are. No, no, <laughs> Bose. When you walk in a room, people want to know who is she, and let me go over and talk to her. But I I, I know that you are a big champion of women. I know that you are a big champion of people of color. Yes. But yet there is still so much work to be done in all areas, in, in all of those areas, and certainly in the companies. What would you like to see done in your company in particular and advice for others? Oh, Gail, well, this is this is the question that um, I, I love most, right, about how we can continue to further not just diversity and inclusion, uh, but what role we all play in it. You know, sometimes I think we we let the responsibility go to someone else. You know, it's the government or it's the CEO or, or somebody else who can make a policy to mm -hmm. make us change the way that we behave. And that is what I want us all to realize, that actually the power is within us. You know, and that's not just some trite statement. That it's true. It's really true. It's like, how do you behave? Who are your friends? Who do you get your information from? Who are you connected to? 
you know, and then if we understand who we are and how we behave and the information that we're getting and the way that we treat other people, then we show up in our full selves in every situation. So even for me, it's like regardless of the company that I work for or the environments I'm in, I'm coming in as my full self, you know, fully informed <laughs> with opinions of other people and how they are interacting in the world. And hopefully it's the way that I'm able then to also put those opinions into my work. And it's the way that I hope my colleagues are also behaving and therefore creating work that serves our world. Bozma, it's Anthony. Uh, you've created a, a series uh, of badass workshops. I love, I love this name to help people find their greatest <laughs> self. What, what's your, to you, what does being a badass mean? Oh, being a badass means that you are completely in full control of who you are, flaws and all. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean perfection. Laws and all. It doesn't yeah, mean that you are bigger or better than anybody else. It's just that you fully value who you are and what you contribute. And for me, that's that's what's true. You know, I, I walk around the planet knowing that, uh, like the lesson in biology, you know, it's like if if one molecule enters a matter, the whole matter changes. Yeah. And I'm that molecule that changes matter. I have a question about award shows. Um, within the pandemic, I think we had a real lift of the veil of award shows. They're not as fancy, they're more at home. Yeah. We've had the Oscars, mm -hmm. you know, so white, the, you know, HFPA, um, you know, Ted Sarandos came out and said, we wanna stop working with you guys until you guys change. You are a fixer. You come in and you literally mm -hmm. fix it. Is there a way to come in and fix award shows? Because when I watch the NFL draft, there's just such excitement. The and great. how can we get behind award shows again? Because I think they're off track right now. Yeah, yes, well, well, I agree with that. I mean, I was I was really so proud of, of Netflix, obviously, and Ted with the letter to the um, HFPA, yes. because for us, it's really about making sure that we're holding ourselves accountable and everyone we work with accountable. You know, this the change doesn't happen just because we say we want it to change. We have to hold everyone accountable, the entire industry, and then further than that, all of corporations. You know, so I, I do believe that there's a there's a possibility for us to continue to see the change that we yep. want. Um, but again, I, I won't leave it to policymakers. You know, it's all of us. It's the folks who watch the shows. It is the folks who uh, go to movies. It is the people who uh, support. I like you know, the point like, you're we've making. Gotta say something. I like the point you're making when you say we yeah. all play a part. But this stuck out to me about you. You said that you have reclaimed no. the quote angry black woman. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, there's quite a stereotype, isn't And you're there, talking that, to a uh, black woman insane. right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, exactly, exactly. Well, the stereotype exists that if you're a black woman, or let's just call it a woman of color, mm -hmm. you know, who expresses any kind of passion, uh, excitement, sometimes aggressiveness, you mm -hmm. know, in your opinion, that you are hysterical, and then the worst name, angry, yes. and sometimes the B word. You know, and, and for me, especially in light of last summer and with the murder of George Floyd, and we saw all of the racial reckoning that was happening across America and really across the world, yep. I just wanted to reclaim it. I was like, hell yeah, I'm angry. Yeah. I'm mad. Okay. And right. you should be too. Yes. And so if you're I, I not, hear you. then you got to fix it. I hear you, Bozeman <laughs> St. John. Congratulations on your new role. We'll talk to you later on. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. All right. Thank you.